right, guys, welcome back to another episode. This is Passion for Real Estate Investment, and I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Steve Lloyd. Woo! Woo! Right? <laughs> yeah, baby. So it's great. You know, Steve and I connect often. We, we see each other at a lot of events. We do a lot of business together as well. I definitely wanted to bring Steve onto the podcast so he can share some of his insights with you and tell you why he's passionate for real estate. So we'll start with that before we jump into the other stuff. Steve really big on raising capital, helping other people, adding value to other investors, creating strategic partnership. We'll jump into that as well. But the first thing I always ask the guests is, why are you passionate for real estate? You know, Fuquan, I, I think it, it starts with uh, thinking about that passion for real estate. But for me, I'm passionate for entrepreneurs. I just think it's one of the greatest gifts we have um, is and it's it's the backbone of our country. I mean, if you think how cars and all the innovations that we have in our life um, here in the world in the United States, it all starts with an entrepreneur. It starts with someone's idea. And it's funny being an entrepreneur. It sounds really cool, but it's so hard, and there's not a lot of support when these people have these great, amazing ideas. They're really like, how is that guy going to do that? Or how is that woman going to pull that off? Um, and I actually lose support rather than people, uh, you know, getting behind them and supporting them. And what I love about real estate and the, especially events that we go to is we create communities to help each other. You know, years ago, as I was creating my own success and it took a while, um, I just looked for other great entrepreneurs to create strategic partners with. Um, because it was lonely, man. It was tough. It was lonely. I always tell people I was that guy who was pacing the uh, my short house down in Wildwood in the middle of the night thinking of how this idea I had, how was I was going to pull it off to success. And, and I think, you know, I'll just lead into some things, you know, that entrepreneurship is amazing, but it's hard and you need a team and you need people to help you get through that. And that's what we kind of do for each other. Absolutely. It's not about buying our real estate deal. It's about going back and forth when we have issues or problems and trying to um, be problem solvers and take those issues and those problems and create success out of it. So I always tell people, you know, when you're feeling down and you're getting beat up on a deal, just keep attacking and get it finished because the next deal will come easy from the lessons you learned from the last deal. So it's kind of a... A mix of things why I love being an entrepreneur. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you do a lot of uh, capital raise. I know that's your forte, what you specialize in. Um, you're not actually physically going to look at properties, deal with contractors and everything else. What made you decide just to go in that lane and focus just on capital raise? Because I know that's a whole other business. There's yeah. a lot of challenges with that. It, it, it's a whole other business, but I had an idea um, like 13 years ago when I got into the business and I saw these other people and the, the struggles that they had going and flipping properties and leasing properties and renting properties and doing notes and the hard money. And, uh, you know, I just had this idea. I was like, man, I can, if I get a hundred thousand dollars from a family member and I can pay them like a 10% uh, interest only um, return to them, I'm helping them because that's a great return. They're not going to get that in the stock market. They didn't know where to get that anywhere else. And if I could go find a property, <clears throat> And I could create a partnership with someone that was really good at renovating properties. If I could find the money and I could find someone to strategically do this with, um, and they could find that property and renovate it and create the equity. It's funny. People go and buy equity, but I create equity. So, you know, it might be finding that $80,000 property needs $20,000 worth of rehab. So I need a hundred grand. But once that property is finished, it's probably worth about one twenty five. So from that idea, I just put that on steroids. Because I feel that whatever niche we're in, um, I think when we concentrate on doing what we individually do well, um, I can find strategic partners. So for like, you know, me and you, Fuquan, I knew you were great at the note world. I wanted to be a part of what you're doing. You know, you were raising some money, but I think, you know, my influx of money took you to another level. Absolutely. And it took me Absolutely. to another level. And we created a win-win situation. I mean, it's called, we got like this massive can of whoop ass yeah, going yeah. on, right? I, I remember I took lunch with you years ago and I was doing some real estate, the market crash, you know, coming back, start, I started my note fund, you know, doing that. We took lunch. It was at the beginning of creating a strategic partnership. And he was like, man, you got to do more real estate. And I was like, no, nah, I'm just focusing on notes. She was like, I'm telling you, you got to do more real estate. 
And uh, when I started to ramp that up and then we created the strategic partnership, that definitely allowed me to scale to the next level and definitely allow you to be a part of that as well. So the strategic partnerships is very important. You were mentioning something um, in one of the sessions you had, which really resonated with me, how people are just so greedy and they want all the money to themselves. They want to be, they want to just be dominating everything. They don't want to partner with other people. And you go further faster and create more wealth by the strategic partnership. So I definitely like, um, you know, that strategy. Yeah. Using. I, I feel that, you know, at the beginning of every relationship, it's not always easy, right? But I think once you get through a couple deals, you might not make as much money. Um, but as you go along and you start doing bigger deals and more deals and you can keep that relationship, it kind of cultivates something amazing. Um, and we kind of, the first two years was a lot of work for you, a little bit of stress for me, but you know what? That's the way it goes. That's the way an entrepreneur is. That's the hardships of an entrepreneur. But now we're starting to see that fruit, right? Yeah. And that's a green <laughs> fruit. I love green fruit. Give me green fruit, baby, because it's dollars, baby. Right? right? <laughs> Let's do it. Money! So that, that brings us to the next thing with the arbitrage. So you having the ability to raise that capital, you know, it creates an arbitrage situation for you. And I was actually listening to uh, one of the sessions that you did on the mastermind um, session that I used to have where you was talking about, you know, if you raise a million dollars and you're able to make an arbitrage of 8%, you know, 4% is cost and then you keep that other 4% that brings yeah. it to the company. So let's talk a little bit about that, about that arbitrage. Yeah. So the, the only way my mind thinks is helping an investor, we got to create win-win situations. So I basically go to people that want to invest, but they don't want to do the work. So it's kind of like a trickle down effect everywhere. So I have people that want to invest their self-directed IRA and their regular money. They give it to me today. I pay them maybe between an eight and 10% return. I take that money. I put it out there into investments where I'm looking to make a 16 to 17% return on that money. Now we have a cost, an operating cost in our company. We usually runs at about three, three to four percent. And then my goal was to make a 4% spread on, um, between the investor's money and what we net as a company. So it's always, you know, the problem with an entrepreneur is they always want the big, the big hit, right? But I'm more of a Warren Buffett guy. I believe that I make investments over a long period of time. That's what creates wealth. So when I was raising like a million or two, yeah, that was only making me like 40, 60 to 80 thousand dollars a year. But I knew if I continue to do this for a long period of time, continue to raise capital and buy assets today, you know, we're, you know, there's 33 million in, in Stone Bay. And, um, you know, we kick, you know, on the, on the yearly just base, we cook at about four to four and a half percent return, um, of profit. But you know what? That doesn't include the upside equity when we sell a deal. That's kind of bonus money that I look at because you're going to have deals that are give you, you know, we just did a deal. We just did a, a we just sold an apartment building for 30, 42 million, 40, 40.8 million. And that was ended up being a 65% return. One of the best deals I've ever, it was the best deal I've ever did in my life. Um, I didn't think that, I didn't think that deal was going to come, you know, when I started raising capital, that was like nine years ago, but I put nine years in and now today it's we own like eight apartment buildings over 10 million. It's kind of surreal. Yeah. The problem with the entrepreneur, just to go off a little bit of topic here, the problem with the entrepreneur, entrepreneurs are just short sighted. When, when you want that instant gratification in a company and you just start out, you're not going to make a whole lot of money three to four years. The reason why it doesn't work is when, when things get tough, they give up and they just go to another field or if they were doing flips, they go to notes or they go to, they go to notes, they go to multis or they go to single family. They, they, and then when they go to that other business, guess what? They're starting all over again yeah. and they still got to kick in for two to three years to get that one going. And that's where they make mistakes, right? Stay focused on what you want, make you happy, what gives you joy. It starts with that, what makes you happy in your day-to-day -day life. And if you do it well and become an expert, you're going to create wealth over time. That's awesome. It's all about being that's passionate it. for real estate investment. So, you know, for people who are new yeah. getting started, um, what can you tell them um, that you learned along your journey that can kind of, and we know it's hard work, we know they got to be around the right people in the right places, you know, they need to find a mentor. What else can you um, uh, impart upon them that will add value on 
them growing uh, in their passion for real estate okay. investing. I don't care what level you are. I don't care if you're a beginner or you're an expert. You need an accountability partner. You need someone to talk to and communicate with the ups and the downs and the lows. You got. To, you must have an accountability partner. Okay, that's number one. Number two, if you're starting out, you got to get in front of every. You got to get into every single note event, investor event. Not everyone there you're going to communicate well, but in the masses, most entrepreneurs want to help you because they were there once before. So join a local RIA, get into a mastermind, get involved with Fuquan. He's got a program coming up. And you know what? I don't want to hear that you got, you know, a program's two or three grand. I've been doing this for 13 years. I know, I know for a fact I spent over $70,000 last year going to events and, uh, and mastermind, excuse me, and, and uh, self-development classes, Tony Robbins, Greg Reed's event, um, the, the, the Stress Note Mortgage event. I mean, I go to the events and I pay. I'm going this year, I went to Tony, Tony Robbins. It cost me $5,500, another $1,500 to sit up front. Uh, well, that was five thousand to sixty five hundred. That whole week cost me like ten thousand dollars. But you know what it was? It wasn't Tony Robbins. It was the other entrepreneurs that were at that event. Um, and I have to tell you, the free the free events are good. You know, you have to be willing. The better events is when you pay more. So when I see an event that's eight hundred or a thousand, they're the events I want to go to because they're the ones that are people really taking action. When I go to an event and it costs fifty bucks. I know it's it, there's just not going to be enough substance there for me. Um, so you know, Tony Robbins is coming again. It's in Amsterdam. I'm going. I'm yeah. taking sixteen. I'm going also, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm man. one of those we're, sixteen. We're going, people. right? But Absolutely. forget yeah. about Tony Robbins. Yeah. He's not the man, right? It's the sixteen people that I'm going with that I'm going to learn from and create this relationship um, and learn from. So. There's plenty of education. I go. I didn't go to college, but I've spent an education on self development and real estate meetings and getting involved in masterminds. Um, and that's just what you need to do. Yeah, continuously investing in yourself basically is what you're doing because you're not going to grow unless you continue to invest in yeah. yourself. So going to the masterminds and strategy sessions and all those things, you're helping build yourself, and that's how you build your company, right? You can't build your company unless internally you grow. So um, I thank you for you know coming by and that's it. The I, thought, I thought we were going for like an hour. I thought I was the guy, right? What's this thirteen so, minutes so stuff? A podcast is short, sweet, uh, to the point. Oh, that's me then. I'm sure it's sweet and to the point. Cut circle with straight line. That's you. So, All right, let's do thank this, you my for friend. Being a part it's of a long podcast. journey. Yes, passion for real estate investment. Steve Lloyd, Stone Bay. You want to tell them how to get in contact with you? Company website, something like that. Uh, just uh, you can find me on Facebook. I think it's uh, Stephen Lloyd Westchester. I think you got to put in Steve Lloyd Westchester, Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's got um, Facebook. St- StoneBay.com. <laughs> you can find me. Just go on social media. You'll find yeah, me Steve Lloyd, Stone Bay. Thank you, sir. Passion right. for real estate investment.